Well, Manif, it's it's really great. I'm I'm based out in England. It is about 10 p.m. at night, and so we generally have an international audience um, okay. who who tune in and and I really love to hear um, and celebrate our 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 our, 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 our artists because. Um, during the 80s and 90s, we really fell in love with the music. Um, and sadly, today we don't get that same quality of music. So there's a lot of nostalgia to go back and talk to our, our, our favorite artists, but also even hear their, their journey, because so much of those days was pretty much, here's the music and we promote the music, but we never really got to know the people behind the music. So um, we just like to start off by saying, where were you born and raised? So that uh, you know, our audience can get a sort of an idea of where you are. I am from? a native New Yorker. I was born in the borough of Manhattan in New York City. Um, I am from East Harlem, New York. So okay. I'm a Harlem girl. Okay. I know everybody knows Brooklyn and Harlem. The you know, this was kind of like the <laughs> everywhere you go. But I'm yeah. from Harlem, New York, and um a proud Harlem native. So born and raised in New York City. So I guess for if when it's hip hop, we all know about Brooklyn and Queens. But when it's like R and B and soul, it, it's Harlem that seems to be what's res, re, resonant to to most of us who are not in America. Uh huh. Yeah. How was it, it like growing up in in Harlem? It was, um, you know, I grew up in in the hood. You know, um, there was a lot. I grew up my formative years, my teenage years. I grew up in uh, the eighties. I was born in seventy two, so my teenage years. We're dead in the middle of the crack epidemic wow. uh, in, you know, in New York City in in mid 80s. Right. So it was it was like a war zone. I had uh, a life. Uh, I had like a parallel life because I've been working in the industry since I was seven years old doing commercials, theater since second grade, seven been professional. And um, so I had like this this parallel life. And um and so, you know, on one hand, you know, where I grew up at is like I'm experiencing things that no no child, no human being for that matter, but especially a child should be experiencing, you know, the death of their their friends by, you know, uh, gun violence and uh, just watching um, a lot of, you know, uh, family member, like some family members, friends, the community, the people in the community fall prey fall victim to um, the crack epidemic. It was just really very interesting how I, uh, how I, you know, the survival mechanism and then having this whole completely different world, professional world, creative world, where I was meeting tons of different people, working with tons of different people, like Morgan Freeman, Charles Dutton, um, uh, and, and copious amounts of other people as a kid, Gregory Hines, uh, Maurice Hines, like, and and I'm living, you know, in the middle of this, you know, of the urban jungle, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, for some, I mean, I, I've only seen it in films, um, um, New Jack City, or uh, and stuff like that, and not really, un- and and not really understand how bad it, it was. What was life before the sort of crack uh, epidemic, like especially well, in Harlem? Do you remember that? And I can. It 70- was, you know, it the when I was. Uh, when I was coming up, I remember it. I remember being a, a young child, um, and it not it being more of a sense of community, like your friends, you know, parents. We all watched out. Everybody watched out for each other's kids, and you, you know, there was a lot of respect. There was a lot of still. I grew up in a time of community and the yeah. village, yeah. so you know, and and respect for for my elders, and you know, Miss 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 um, Frederick had the right to, you know, give me a little pop if I did something, she saw me, I'm going to tell your mother, but I'm, you know, and all that stuff. So I I grew up in that, and then I watched it turn into this weird war zone situation. Wow. You know, as, um, and then having people on both sides, you know, my brother fell, you know, prey to uh, crack addiction, And my brother, you know, my brother also, you know, we incidentally, all of us had our bouts with addiction. Um, They, they, they're 12 and 13 years older than me. So they were way ahead of me um, in their teen years. So uh, my, you know, I watched that in certain family members and my friends, family, you know, older brothers and sisters, 
um, be affected by crack. And then we knew people. Then there was the other side of having friends that were selling and, you know, and that part of it being glorified and glamorized because the, 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 the street dealers and the artists, you know, the musicians, it just like, that's always been a thing. It's always kind of, you know, those worlds always kind of meshed, you know, um, from, from the jazz era on, you know what I mean? Because music, uh, musicians want to be, want to make a lot of money like the street deals. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I have a head cold. I'm so no. sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just, I'm going to, I'm going to have to mute real quick. Yeah. Well, you can mute. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I have a little head cold, so I might have to do that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it just came out of nowhere like a day ago. I was like, oh my goodness. But um, those worlds always have, you know, matched the, the arts and the the streets, especially in Harlem, because, you know, uh, dealers get, you know, they have money there. They want to hang out with the stars. The stars want to, you know, hang out with the cats with, that are going to pay them to do stuff. It kind of, that's always been kind of like a thing. Um, so, you know, just kind of seeing it, having, experiencing it from both angles you know it was just like very strange wow interesting no i mean as i said i i will have to do some research in, in that because it just seems as if it, it's almost like somebody came in and infected a community with this for a, 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 for the, a reason of trying to destroy a community because that it just sounds like it was just like planted because just from nowhere it just because it turns everyone upside down well, yeah, I mean, you know, first it was, you know, um, heroin was huge and then crack was and then cocaine, you know, that was more of a luxury situation. Um, but it, it, it just it just became what it became. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's unfortunate. So, so but you said you started to sing professionally at age seven. How did you even start getting into music that that early? My first manager um, manager was, no, I'm talking when you were you said it was seven so I'm trying to go back yeah no I am I'm taking you back my first manager was my second grade teacher so <laughs> we were doing a, <laughs> oh, goodness. yeah my um we were doing a class production okay and I auditioned you know to sing a song because she you know and um I sang and she was blown away and she we had a, a special connection we ended up being like I'm like that was like my second mom so it's like me and this this Jewish lady that's the same age as my mother um who I was also my mother was my first best friend so it, it's like um we were really close she asked my mom if she could take me to her friend's agency and my mother you know had to talk with me as long as you keep your grades and do, do your schooling you can do what you know that's cool with me and I started doing auditions and I started doing national commercials and that's just, that was how it started. But where did you learn how to sing? Cause this, for, for this to be recognized at age seven, where were you singing? It's uh it's in the genes. My mom's side is super, super musical. Um, okay. my, um, my, my mom used to sing my <laughs> uncle and my uncles played instruments. My, my youngest uncle, my mom's youngest brother, and the baby of, of the six uh was a uh a child prodigy a pianist okay um you know everybody my my grandmother sang um she sang uh in a group uh, what's the uh style of music that like uh i forgot what the style is but my grandmother would have been a hundred um, so um whatever was going on in the in the 20s yeah uh, when she was a teenager uh, so it, I just came from a musical family and I just, you know, it just, it was there. Okay. So it's not like most of our other guests who, you know, they, they learned their chops in church and they sort of, then from there. Yeah, they, they grew up in church. Yeah, they grew up in church. Uh, so it was, it was in the jeans. And then, you know, my mother loved music, loved jazz, all types of music. And uh, my brother loved music. So between the two of them and my dad, but mostly between the two of my my of them, my mom and my brother, I was, yeah, I was flooded with all types of music and exposed to different things. Period. Creatively. So at, when when your your teacher becomes a manager and and is and is getting you to do these things, 
did you then have a sense of, oh, this is a career that I'd like to pursue? Or was it just like... I knew it from even before that because I would put on these concerts. That's all I did at home. You know, I was doing that from when I was like two to three years old. My first concert my, my aunt took me to uh, was Shaka Khan, who I was in love with. And I mean, still, you know, still in love with her. But um, she was like the first, you know, person like, ah, you know, <laughs> and that was my first concert. And I was Shaka Khan for Halloween when I was four and five, those two years. I was her. And um, uh, so I just, that's just how it started. I was doing concerts and, you know, imagining, you know, singing in front of a huge audience. And um, I think uh, that is exactly how things came to fruition. Um, That's one of the things I say we forget to, uh, because as adults, we become so jaded, we forget to use our imagination and, and, and remember how powerful our mind is and our imagination is to help things to actually manifest, you know? So, yeah, yeah. I I mean, I, I, I'm, um, I'm a child psychotherapist and, and, um, and and when I'm dealing with teenagers who struggle with depression and and low self-esteem, it's, this is, we try to work alongside of that. So I'm always part of what we do here was actually to hear these stories, just to be able to give people inspiration when they ask when they do find a roadblock just to see how you guys exactly. were able to, to do it back then. Um, yeah. In the midst of, of, of those shows and, and things, did you, were there others, you mentioned Shaka Khan, but with, um, as you're getting older, say in high school, who were you looking to and looking at and says, wow, or was it still just Shaka Khan or were other female oh, singers? I, come? A slew of, of other singers. Tina Marie is my one of my all time favorites. She's like, She's like she's like a musical deity to me, wow. <laughs> for me, you know, um, because she was such a prolific writer as well as vocalist. Like she was an amazing writer, and like her her writing was so colorful and uh, the imagery and like you could see her writing. And I've always often found myself like uh, doing like acting out her music as I was, you know. Uh, singing on top of her in 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 um in the house, and uh, Dionne Warwick, my it was one of my mom's faves. Nancy Wilson, Phyllis Hyman, oh, yeah, Luther Vandross, and his and his background singers. Mm-hmm. Uh, they helped me with my heart, you know, perfect my harmonies, yeah, and strengthen my ear along yeah. with my mom, you know, and uh, George, uh, uh, George Benson, Ray Goodman and Brown, Al Jarreau, <laughs> okay. uh, not a gay. Al Jarreau is one of my favorites. Um, okay. You know, uh, yeah. So I mean, from young up until you know, then it was whoever was go whatever was going on at the time I was in high school. But for the most part, and, and still even now, I'm still like a a a, a, a an oldie but goodie girl. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I still listen to. The stuff that I grew up on, OJ, yeah. you know, one of my father's favorite groups, and uh, the Spinners, one of my favorite groups, and <laughs> so yeah, you know. So I, I had two questions around Tina Marie. I think one, um, how did you know that she wrote? Because I don't know. I mean, most of us probably won't didn't know the difference between a singer singing their songs or them actually writing. Because I think in Motown, most of them were being given songs. So how at that young age did you know that she was a writer as well as a singer? Um or was it and that she um well because remember the the albums? Yeah. You know, I'm 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 50. I'll be 51 in January. <laughs> okay. The, they um the liner notes like the jacket, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Like inside in the back it had all the credits. Oh, so you re- you'll be reading those things. Oh heck yeah. Because wow. then she would oft, often, she often had her lyrics mm. in her, in her um, album. So yeah, and singing Portuguese Love, Casting Over Brown, Yes Indeed, uh, you know, all of those songs. Okay. I know because they had the lyrics and they were written by her, you know, or her and someone else, mostly her. She did a lot of writing. Wow. She was a prolific writer, like, ugh. That's such a that's such a loss along with so many others, but yeah, that was like so, that was devastating to me. 
And then the other question then becomes that, you know, because a lot of people have picked as a favorite um, and they're also accepting that she, she was white, but she sang soul and R&B. Did, was that a, an issue um, growing up that I oh, was this white woman singing our songs? I mean, um, no, because it was organic and authentic. You could feel that. You yeah. could feel that. That's just what she, you know. You she's a, she was in, what she was influenced by is what you heard. Mm. The the artists that she listened to, you know, um, which were like I think uh, it, I mean copious, so many different types. But she definitely was listening to jazz, blues, R and B. That's what she gravitated towards, even in her and 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 um, you can hear her jazz and classical influence. You know, she was she loved music, mm-hmm. and you could hear that in her stuff. How you know, like in Casanova Brown, how she would change over into a bossa nova, uh, uh, type of bridge that she did in Casanova, standing room only, up, up, up. like. Concert so now everyone's that swing Boston. Come on, man! Like you can hear it in her stuff. Yeah. So wow. yeah, I that I just enjoy because she's just it's just you never knew what to expect. It wasn't boring. It's like oh my god, she did that. You wow. know. Yeah. No, that no, it's no. That's that's fascinating. I'm gonna do get do more uh, research on uh, on 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 Tina Marie. Um, but then so you go through that through high school. Now, um, how are you then plotting your your way f- into the music industry? Because if you if you think about we get into the nineties and and the industry switches from you know you mentioned Phyllis Hyman and and all those time Luther, they were more for sophisticated sort of R and B acts, you know, wearing suits, yeah. dressing gowns, and then we, we get into the nineties and we have Uptown with Mary and and, yeah. and SWV yeah. and 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 Jodeci. How did you? So what, how were you, did did you start to change your, your music direction as you were getting ready to try and get into the industry? Or what was, how was that transition for you? Well, I didn't really have to do that. I just, you know, I enjoyed the artists that were out at the time. I mean, that's just, you know, I listened to, you know, contemporary music, um, the younger artists that came, you know, that were like my contemporaries. Um, and then what happened was I, I, you know, by six degrees of separation, this gentleman that was like, you know, wanted to manage me and I gave him a shot. He introduced me to Wendy Creedle, who was then working, um, who was Andre Harrell's um, son's mom. Uh, okay. She was working at, um, she was an A&R at MCA. She was creating a girl group. And it. I, I made the audition. And uh, what was I going to say? Oh, I'm sorry. And I made the audition and it was five, it was five of us. Um, three three girls and one of them, I mean, four four women, including myself, not including myself, five of us, one of which was free from 106 in Park, who is <laughs> like my sister. Um, that's my that's my spirit sis. And um we were called different shades of brown. Wow. And we did a we did we signed did a production deal with MCA and she got heavy D to produce our three records so we could get for the demo for the uh the demos so we could um get signed or whatever yeah all of that just to for me to get a a deal with him like for him to you know sign me like it was weird like you know the the trajectory was that way yeah but then did 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 you ever contemplate was the group something you thought about that you wouldn't mind doing or was it um big or were you always trying to be a solo artist what what was that for, for you I I am a team player and I want I love to sing and I love music. So however it came, I was gonna do it. You know, I was I wanted to experience. I was young. I was 20, 20 what, two? Yeah, I was like 22. Why not? Amazing singers. They were great, great great young women. Uh we got along. I thought it was a great opportunity. And it's, I didn't think it would be something that um, that I would have to be married to, depending on how successful it was. Who yeah. you know, who knows? Um, I knew that if I did want to do something solo, that I probably would be able to. Yeah. Um, it just it just worked out that it it just so happened that the group didn't go anywhere, but everybody ended up moving, doing different things, uh, on their own. Uh, and 
And that's how, I mean, I knew Hev socially, but that's professionally how we got connected. Okay. I mean, did I mean, growing up and living in New York, did it? It seems as if everyone's coming to New York to get a record deal. If you growing up with everyone, was it? Did you think it would be easier, or was it harder than you thought? I didn't think about it. I wasn't. I knew it was going to happen. I I didn't even have a stress. Like it's so funny. It kind of just things just kind of landed in my lap, um, because I knew that eventually it, something was going to give. Because I was just, I was, I was. My gift was making room for me. I was wow. doing things that I wanted to do. Opportunities were coming. I took them. And then one thing leads to another. And I end up with a record deal. I end up signed to Uptown Records. Like out of nowhere. Because from, I'm going to tell you the story. So from the day when we were recording with the group, right? Like I was a, I'm a, I was a party girl. Like I love to hang out. I was a drinker. Um, I used to have fun and I was late to the studio and I was a little hungover and my voice was a little <laughs> right. So Hev was like, ah, come on, man. I wanted you to sing lead on this particular song. And I was like, okay. So he made um Dio, one of his um his team, uh made him run me around the block a couple of times to open my throat up. Right. So I do the song. And it's like, fine. He was like, listen, I want you to do some reference vocals for me. So I'm a, I'll am i call you soon and you come, you know, get paid. And I was like, wonderful. So he, I, he doesn't, I have, I didn't hear from him. So it's like December 22nd is like close to Christmas. So I'm like, yo, I haven't heard from him. Yet. Let me call him. So I called him. I was like, what's up? I haven't heard from him. He's like, oh my God. He was like, I know I'm my bad. I was going to, you know, I was going to call you. Da, 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 da. He said, what are you doing tomorrow? He said, like, I need you to do this record. And I said, cool. He said, okay, come in tomorrow. Da, 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 meet me here. Da, da, da. We did this record call. It's all right. So, you know, we're in a professional studio um, soundtrack, to be exact. And I do the, do the record. And after we finish, I'm still in the booth. And I'm looking at him. And he's at the board. He has his feet up on the board. Like, he's leaning back in the big chair. And he's like, has his feet up, legs, ankles crossed on the board. So he's just like, sitting there like this, like, you know, just kind of like, like, what the hell is he doing? He was like, you know what? Um, he was like, you know what? Um, he was like, you could keep this record. This is your record. You could keep this record. Um, and I was like, oh, that's great. Like, thanks. You know, I'm like thinking, oh, I have a, a professionally done demo. That's awesome. So I can have that in my arsenal. Awesome. And I'm like, okay. I was like, are we done? He was like, you know what? He says, listen, he was like, uh, be here tomorrow. We're going to start your album. I was like, stop playing with me. <laughs> he was like, be here tomorrow, be here on time, and we'll start your, we'll start your album tomorrow. And that was it. And within, within, it, it, it might, it, I don't even think it was two weeks. I was signed. I was had, I had a meeting. I met Andre. And I was signed to Uptown. Wow. <laughs> okay. Now, so you were the one who was late, hungover, shows up, and he, and then and the other four professionals, and and he just singles you out. I mean, did you, did you did how did the others take it when you know? <laughs> well, the 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 um like now remember this is beats later. Nothing really happened with the group. Okay. They did it. You know, kind of just fizzled out nothing happened you know we, um some of them decided to do other things because it wasn't moving as swiftly as they wanted you know so it was just like it wasn't like a big deal nobody really cared okay but with the sound I, I think whatever he saw um or whatever he was he was being obedient to i'm i'm glad he it, it had nothing to do with mm. me per se as far as why he wanted to do it he just saw something that he liked like I, you know or or heard something that sound, he felt a vibe, whatever it was. Um, I mean, I know what it, it is. I, I know what I have. I know what I um, encompass. I mean, I could only. It, I'm the only Monifa. You mm -hmm. know, nobody else can be me. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So whatever it was, he was obedient to it, and I'm I'm forever grateful for that. You know, it was amazing working with him.
So uh, most of us wouldn't have realized that Andre was still around um, at the time you got signed. I, I, because I, I thought he had gone to Motown. So what was, how? No, that was I was one of the last artists. It was so for real, and and myself. I think I was actually the last artist that did that, that was successful on Uptown MCA. Because my first project, my debut album, was on Uptown MCA. That's Andre was still at Uptown. Okay, because I know it was yourself, um, the Lost Boys, and So For Real were the, the sort of the the last the that last closed it out. the the the, <laughs> the, 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 the last group. So, um, so heavy and and you actually what I'm what what you're very synonymous for is because most of us I've always loved Heavy D from his first album, but it was only when he, you came out that I didn't realize he can produce because he was he never we never saw him as a producer with anything Heavy D and the Boys until he started with you and then also with so for real so that was it took us by surprise that wow he's actually he can do this stuff um yeah what was what was different um for, as hev as a producer because as i said we're, we're I'm, I'm a massive um hev fan but what was it like what was he good at as a producer in helping you with your first your debut album well, he had a he had a, a vision, and he he included me in it. I mean, he couldn't do it without me. But he picked he picked the things that he thought would sound great with my voice. Mm -hmm. um, he created things um, that he thought would sound great, and picked songs that he uh, thought would sound mm -hmm. great, and I liked them. And he would run them by me, ask me how I felt about them, let me listen, and we did it together. Wow. So. Um, and then he did he did nobody's body. He wrote that and produced that, actually hands-on produced that um completely by himself. The other records he did with other producers, mm -hmm. you know, newer producers and uh, you know, because I had track masters and who else? A couple of people. I can't remember. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, pretty dope album, you know, because he, you know, he's heavy D. He was able to get a lot of great people on. And because he was trying to, he was proving himself mm. as, uh, you know, Diddy had already done it. And I think Hev was doing his own, like, I can, you know, I know I can do, you know, have artists and create like really great bodies of work with them. So that's yeah. probably why um, Puffy wasn't on him. <laughs> that's probably why I didn't have any Puffy tracks or anything on him. Yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, and, and, you know, that, that, uh, um, I remember interviewing um, Jimmy Jenkins, Jimmy Love. Jimmy Love. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, what yeah. happened to the um, Andre and, and his uh, from Uptown to Motown? And he said, yeah, Andre had lost his mind. He, you know, kind of almost like Puffy. I think there was that, it, it's how Puffy pretty much blew up and everyone was thinking, well, we need to, you know, maybe we need to, to do, take some of that Puffy dust in, in whatever we're doing. But I, I'm, what I'm glad is that your album, didn't sound like a puffy stuff. It sounded different and, and unique. When we first heard you, um, was on the New York undercover, undercover soundtrack. Yeah. Um, because you. yeah, we we um that was you know I had the single, um, and I'm I, I'm going to talk about your third album, Home, because I'm a massive, massive, massive Teddy Riley fan, and so <laughs> I know you, you. What was the nickname you gave Teddy? It was um, Pookie. No, you you gave him a nickname. Did which, I? Yes, when oh, you God. when you Please were when you up. were producing that album, and then f when you were doing your promos for that, you you, you I, oh, I wish I could remember because it was such a long time. But I when I, but you you That's had it. Funny, you can't remember. I don't remember. Yeah, you gave him. I'm a sorry, I don't remember. Yeah, you gave him a nickname. I I think I should have. Yeah, yeah. But I I remember when you were on BET and <laughs> talked about it. But anyway, we go. We I digress. So That's of course cool. the album was a massive hit for most of us because. Guy came back and did the Tell Me What You Like, and then we had your track. Um, such a you know, it's such an infectious our song. Um, um, and then it had with heavy rapping, you had McGraw, and then you had yourself. What was that that song? The 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 how it came together. Did you, um what and you know the chemistry of that? And I was that. That was a that was what he was like. I think I, we got your single, and uh, that was written by Terry Robinson from The oh. Girl and Terry and Monica. Terry and so Monica. Terry yeah. Robinson wrote wrote I Miss You, uh, and that's her on the background singing on the hook with me. Oh. Uh, that's both, you know that's her both of us right. Um, so, uh, 
I just, I was like, I loved it. I thought it was dope. I, I, I was like, oh, you know, that's, we were already working on the album. I think that's one of the, yeah, I miss you was one of the first songs I recorded for the album after mm. It's All Right. Because okay. It's All Right ended up being on, on the album, which is the, the, the reference, the song that I was referencing. Oh. Okay, okay. That was it's all right. And it was for a 14 year old boy that they were signing at the time, 12, 12 or something like that. They were gonna uh -huh. sign the uptown. And I think I actually took his spot. <laughs> Cause I don't I didn't hear I never heard about a, a boy ever again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well at that time, if it's not Usher Tevin, I don't think any other for the, the it wasn't uh yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. Just, okay. But the um and I think one of the things that I liked about when I heard, like most of us, when we heard I, I Miss You, is that you sounded very unique and distinctive. And it, it there's something about singing that song that it felt um, there was a lot of, you know, you talked about when you, you listen to Tina Marie sing and, and, and it's almost as if she, you want to act it out. There's something uh -huh. about how your voice is when you're singing that that actually it feels like you're truly missing somebody, and it's not just oh. like you're just singing a song, song. So that's why it, it was very, you know, and it's just a very smooth vibe and and stuff. Um, and then you, yeah, yeah. So as I said, it was it was, it was an amazing way to to introduce yourself to to us. Um, did the success of the song were you surprised by it, or how did you think it was? You know, what did you, what was your thought about the reception? I'm so glad that I wasn't thinking. <laughs> I, was just, I was just experiencing it in the moment, you know, being, you know, didn't take it for granted, but then also I knew how fickle this business could be. I just was moving in what was happening. I knew that, um, you know, I'm, I'm a consummate professional. I, I'm, you know, so I, when I need to be somewhere, I'm there, I'm working, I work hard. And um, mm -hmm. I was just, things were happening. It was happening. So I wasn't like I didn't stress about certain things uh, about, oh, I hope it gets this much radio play. I was just working. I was on the where we're talking about mom and pops. So I was, you know, uh -huh. on doing promo tours and, you know, and doing my my dates. And so I was working the record. So I was getting out of it what I was putting into it yeah. and what they were putting into it as well. Yeah. And so it was organic. Mm. It was organic. I mean, most of us might um, might forget that back in those days, um, and Jimmy Love said that you had to go to radio stations and sh and stores and do a lot of these things to get record store, yeah, and and yep, do yep, yep. Uh, and do a lot of that. I got I, I love that because I got to experience the that part of it that I would hear about. It, it's the old school way, you know mm. what I mean? Like really getting to meet the people and be with the people that actually sold the records and um, pushed your music. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So that was the day of people that actually had to go take your records to the DJs and people from the, the radio stations that would take your, your music to the DJs and make sure it get, got played. Like yeah. those, the reps, oh my gosh, like there's so many of them that I, I'm so grateful for, yeah. you know? In, 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 so, so we know yourself, Lost Boys, and So Through were the sort of the last three where Heavy was was it was managing. But which of the other artists were still around at the time when you you were on Uptown? Um, that you that you, did you just think it was just the three of you guys? Or um, I know McGrath was also signed at the same time with you, but were um, the the legacy ones like Mary Jodeci? Mary was already gone though. Okay. Mary was on her way. I I came in. I think that's another thing. Mary was already at Uni it was she at Universal? So I think they took it to Geffen. You know, yeah. So I think right. They, See, yeah. there was already a transition because each album that I did of, of the three, each album was in a different, like my first album was Uptown MCA. The second album was Uptown Universal. And then the third home was straight Universal. Yeah. Like it had there was no more Uptown. <laughs> yeah. so, Okay. Yeah, it was interesting that it was kind of it went through all these changes. Yeah, and I still was able, you know, be, even though there was the 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 stability was a little shaky. Yeah. Um, as far as label wise and support, uh, it's it did well, you know, organically. Thank yeah. God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then, did did you think about why well, I'm on Uptown? Because Uptown, I mean, if we're talking about 
guy and 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 heavy and hell yeah. Did I you... mean, yeah, I was super proud, super proud. Um that I got in right, you know, timing is everything. I was able to I, I was able to get in, be a, a part of an amazing label that produced amazing artists. Yeah. That held, like, you know, that was the home of incredible artistry and artists that will never be forgotten. Yeah, yeah. Legacy, you know what I mean? And um just the just uptown and what it stood for in itself. Yeah. And me coming from uptown, living being a Harlem girl. Yeah, being a Harlem girl. It meant a lot. It it was just it it it, it couldn't get any sweeter than that. Yeah. Couldn't make that better, right? <laughs> yes. So, I mean, did the um, wh- how what was the response of your family when you finally got the deal and and stuff? Did were they surprised or were they like, oh, it's about time or how? What was there? No, they weren't surprised. They were just like, great, wonderful. I think you know, for the most part, people knew because I was already in the business, um, as far like you know, acting, singing, doing theater and stuff and commercials. It it kind of just was like the natural. It wasn't a. It wasn't like oh my god. Of course, they were excited. Yeah. That I was coming out with a record. That's a whole other thing. But they knew that I knew that that was the only the first thing that was the only thing that I knew that I wanted to do at the time. Yeah. So it was kind of like the natural order, and they were happy, you know. When when you did come out with your especially with your um um, um mood moment, did you was there anyone else that was out that you that you I don't that you not yourself but that the labels were thinking okay this is where we this is our competition or who's in our lane who who who, who there were so many people but back then even 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 though in the machine they only wanted you to do what was already out there I think I had I had created my niche a little bit yeah yeah I created my niche um the you know the way I dressed even though you know a lot of us, it was kind of like a, a thing, but I did have a little bit of a uh, unique flavor. Uh, I never even allowed those things to play. And no, because nobody, I don't remember having those kind of conversations, except for like you know, oh, you know, so and so is dropped. Like you don't want to drop your album on the same day or a single. You want to be mindful and strategic about that, based on your contemporaries and people that are you know coming out. You you don't want to get overshadowed maybe by an artist that is selling more records, like or kind of really huge. Like I wouldn't come out the same day as Mary. That's dumb. Yeah. Like you know because she was already you know what I mean. Yeah. So as far aside from things that you would normally they would normally do for a new artist that's building. Um, it was never, and I I never allowed that because, again, I'm the only Monifa mm. that like this that I know. I mean, no other Monifa, <laughs> yeah. but this Monifa Carter is I'm the only I'm the only one. Can't yeah. can't be who I am. So I don't I like to even play in those areas. Out and I was very, or in one hand, I had a lot of um. I was clear what was for me was for me. And what, uh, and I was secure. I had confidence in mm. who I was as a, as a, as a, as a, as an artist, as a creative. What I, what I could bring. Yeah, I, but I mentioned because you did have. I mean, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's an issue for us now that a lot of our the female R&B acts sound very much the same, so we don't can't even tell the difference. But when you did come out. You had a very unique voice, a singing style. I loved you. Um, Thank you. The, the, uh, the either uh, you had AZ on, on on it as well, and uh, he's also very. That was unique. a remix, but I miss you. I miss you. He, he was oh, on the. Oh, he remix, did. He did the, oh, he did there. Okay. Um, he did the remix. He did the remix. Yeah, and it's strange to me that I miss you because you had Heavy and, and McGraw who uh, did the first one, and then I yeah. think a- AZ doing the remix, which is. Um, and I said he he was very unique in his style uh, of, exactly in, in how he raps and almost like he's talking. Um, but I loved when you came out with with you because it was also in that same vibe and and it just just solidified the fact that okay this is a this is a different type of vibe. We're not we're not getting um a, a, a an imitation of Mary. It wasn't like Faith. It will it you know right. even though you're in uptown. Um, it it just felt like they were you you they were giving you a space to do your own your own thing, 
Um, he did that on purpose, and I did that. I mean, and I and how I sing is just very different from both of those women that you just um, mentioned, both of whom I truly appreciate their their gifts. Um, Fizzy being one of my faves, you know. Um, Faith, Faith, Fizzy. I call okay, her Fizzy. I, was thinking, okay, okay. I call her Fizzy. Like, yeah, fit that. Yeah, Sunday day. You know, okay. yeah, call her Fizzy. So, um, uh, and you know, she wrote the remix. She oh. wrote that remix. Wow. The, um, the baby come home that is AZ is on. She wrote yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, it does. Yeah. Okay. I can. Yeah. Hear. I can hear her, but I'm not. Okay, like, if you, if you, okay, wait. Yeah, wait. baby, come home. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. My dog is tripping. Baby, yeah. hold on. Yeah, okay. I can, I can hear Faith in, in the, that type of her. her okay. Yeah, the vibe. Yeah. I was yeah. so excited because I loved her as an art, artist. Like, I loved her first album. I thought she was dope. And when I found out that she wrote the remix, I was like, oh, is that? I was like, yeah. Wow. That was awesome. Now, did, did, how much of the industry, the business side, did you know? Because you, you hear you are quickly signing a deal and you know, others are writing stuff for you. Did you did you know anything about, okay, points I need to write to make sure I have publishing? Did you? Oh, yeah. No, I didn't care. I wasn't a writer. So I, didn't, I don't want to say that. I could have been a writer, <laughs> but I was too busy yoing. <laughs> Right to even you know I did some writing on the second and and um the last album oh. I did I did write on the second and last but um and I EP my second album yeah 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 did, yeah you did. right and I was very proud of that and I I wrote a few tracks on that on that record with, in collaboration with some other with other people Vincent Herbert and um Mario Wines Shannon Slam Lawrence like shout out to all of them uh. Uh, but yeah, the first album I was just like, "Wait, what I need to be? What I need to be record? Okay, that's it. I'm in here. I'm stacking vocals. I'm creating. You know, yeah, vocally I was creating. I I wanted the song to be written, done, and ready. <laughs> that part didn't interest me at that point, quite honestly. Um, yeah, and I wasn't. You know, I knew about enough to not get like super robbed. I had a decent deal. Um, the everything else was on me. Uh, as far as everything else, I take accountability for because I could have been more involved and done more. But um, it you know it is what it is. I'm here. I'm, you know, I'm still breathing. I I still got a lot going on. I still have you know God God save life. I have a you know a lot of other things that I'll still mm -hmm. be able to do. Uh, so yeah, it just. Back then, it just that's what it was. Yeah, but I, I do like the fact that because you you because we start off when you talked about coming late to uh, the the a session and you and stuff and uh -huh. so and then <laughs> and then just the 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 mindset because I I that is probably explains why the album felt so good because you were in a very seemed like a happy space where yeah let's just do the stuff. Um, I was I worked hard on the project. Don't get me wrong, and I wasn't like. I wasn't like disrespectful of people. Like it just so happened that that day, I just yeah, I was, it wasn't a good day for me when I did that. You know when we when I was with the group and he wanted me to sing that song, I was just, that just wasn't a good day. Well, it was probably like, divine. It because... wasn't my mo, but that wasn't that was one of those days. <laughs> That's just what it was. But yeah, but yeah. you for the most part, like I, I work hard and um, professional. Great, so I know I'm great to work with. I I don't have any burnt bridges. Mm. In my career, uh, in my professional life, I don't, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty proud of myself, quite honestly. You know, yeah, no, I mean, as I said, it, it, it's you know, many many artists are, are come out with stuff, and not all of them um, become relevant, uh, you know, charts or, or or have the singles that are still um, um, are still vintage till today. When you came out with your um with, with the second album, Mahogany, I think at this time Heavy is now running Uptown. Yeah, so yeah. So here it gets really interesting. So as an artist, I wanted to work with other artists. I was like, okay, Heather's gonna I'm like, you do half the album, and and then I wanna like work with some other producers. But we still it's still you 
like you helped me get with other he felt very uh I think I, I think it hurt his feelings I think he felt like it was a disloyal want but that's not where I was coming I talked to him I didn't understand why he wouldn't just want to do that do half the album EP it uh, and get let me work with some other producers that of the time that I wanted to work with but you know there was there's a under there was a whole nother thing going on as far as him trying to make his mark right that it that's why he processed it that way so summer I recorded summer rain was supposed to be on my album I recorded summer rain and I believe in um I believe again what's for you is for you and that record obviously was not my record it's called Thomas record it's it's a Carl Thomas record it was for Carl you know even we say it exactly alike like he's saying wow. the same way I say it right um I say it in that key and everything that would have been very interesting it was very 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 booty for me as a female to sing it in that same key I was I loved it mm -hmm. but it was his it's his record like could you imagine that not being called Thomas singing summer right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, right, right? Yeah. Had took back the records that he recorded with me on that project. And so Hev is nowhere on that project. Wow. Oh, wow. You know, we talked, we I talked about how um Puffy it Andre just you know went crazy at uh, Motown because of Puffy, and I think, I think that 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 everyone just thought, well, if, look, we need to do the Puffy style and be a, on everything. And, Debo, right, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and and as I said, you were the first person that made <laughs> us aware that Hev could produce. So I think you know he probably wanted to continue that 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 um, that trend because it, no, I didn't. Well, it was like so it. for real. Remember, he had great success with so for real. He produced those records. Yes, he yeah. Co-produced those records. So, um, and the sound like he created the yeah. the whole vibe. But yeah, I mean, as a female, yeah, I was, I was the, yeah, that was very painful, quite honestly, for our our professional and personal relationship. So. I I EP that record with my then manager. And I'm very proud of that. Like, you know, touch it's on that record. I did a good job on that record, man. I wish I had people supporting me at the label because right in the middle, he left. He then he wasn't the president anymore. So all of that, like all of that time, wow. there was so much going on behind the scenes during that project. Yeah, because for as, as I said back in you know we 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 don't have they didn't have really when I mean, the internet was around but not to the extent we have now so I think remembering right. like oh heavy has left Uptown um and now Uptown is no more because after he left they just closed it up and pushed everyone yep. away and, and so we were very disheartened that, um, that 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 he left but and he said he wanted to go back and be an artist but we don't know how much all all, all of that stuff might have affected. His um his uh, and it affected all of us. It affected me and so for real. Without him being there to to steer the ship, he wasn't. It. Yeah, once he took those records back, it was like he did this, and I was just like, I had to keep moving. I had a I had a contract to fulfill. I wasn't gonna be labor. You know, I was like, all right, f you know, f it. Like, yeah. all right, that's how you acting. That's fine. And he tells because. It's strange because when I listen, I, I listen to Touch It, I'm thinking, oh, this is stuff that um, it you know your biggest single, um, yeah. But it's a far <laughs> cry from your first big singles or or what I was used to. I, I yeah. um, it 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 was almost like a single that took or crossed over to the pop. It and... was a, that was my first crossover, and it was huge for me, and it still is huge. It's 25 years in July. Wow. 25th anniversary of Touch It in July. And um what a I'm so proud of it because this was me EPing my album. I did that. I you know what I'm saying? Like I met these producers through an AR rep, but that song I picked. And then when I asked people, they were like, that's the single right there. Well, when I got the feedback, like from my my been like Queen Latifah, um, you know, who was also on that project. Um 
yeah, like I did. I, you know, I'm, I was hands on on that. I'm very proud of it. I mean, so you've gone from the first album where it's like, yep, where's the song? Let me sing and have fun to like, well, how, how much, and this was in two years. I mean, you're spending half of that time promoting your first album and stuff. And right. now you have to go back and start recording a second album. And without the your mentor supporting you, I, that, that doesn't sound as easy as you make it sound like, just having to... No, it it wasn't at the time. Thank goodness I wasn't thinking. And I was like, I wasn't thinking about A, how how I felt abandoned, right? And how that was adding to my already, already all all the abandonment issues that I had already had. I didn't realize how it affected me because I was moving. And, you know, I was also, I'm also a 25 year old, you know, artist who's able to party and, you know, kind of escape and then do work escape and not really I didn't have to sit on the couch until I was like 40 something like you know then it that's when it started getting like girl this is not working for you uh <laughs> you know <laughs> so um I was I was I just had to do I was just doing and I had my own relationships I knew that I had the I, I knew I could do it I knew I know I, I'm, I'm creative. I'm talented. Like I knew what I wanted to, what I wanted to explore, and I did a lot of exploration. You know, I didn't stick to this. Oh, I gotta sound like this. It gotta stay like I wanted to branch out. Wow. And they, the label couldn't keep up with me. They couldn't. They wouldn't get behind it the way they it. It should have been different. If, if from a business perspective, yeah, um, everything happens exactly how it's supposed to. I have no regrets. But it could have been different had I had a different support, even within the label. Um, and because I was nobody's baby, so to speak, mm. they were just doing the obligatory what they needed to do to fulfill the contract. And I made it happen. Shit. I got, I mean, I got a smash single that <laughs> Janet Jackson loves. Um, you know, it's like her 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 she gets ready with that record and <laughs> It, you know, I like I know these things. Like I, you know, I, I performed it for a surprise birthday. Like it, like I did good. You know, and I'm, uh, yeah. I, I had to. I I made it happen. Me and God. Yeah. You know, God was holding me down. But how how did you yeah. agree to do touch it? Because, um, it 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 as I said, it's different from what you did before. So did you not think it was a risk? Like wow, who who who's who's with, with my R and B fans. Sort of no, connected this. No, I didn't see. I wasn't thinking like that. I'm a mm. musician. I'm a music person. So yeah. all the things that I was influenced by, th- that sounded great to me. I don't. I wasn't looking at it mm. and like, oh, I'm an R&B artist, and this is more pop. And that's when actually music was way more segregated, right? Mm. And they didn't know what to do with a black woman that had an uh, R&B hit, and supposedly they. I was pigeonholed because of what, what, where I was. Where my label, what what label I was on, yeah, um, what I produced before, what I did before, yeah, they don't give black artists that room, yeah. We got to do what we're supposed to be, uh, monolithic, mm-hmm. and that's bull- like it's, it sucks. And I said, I said, f that. I was like, what else? It worked because they got instant ready play. Not they didn't know what they would. They didn't know what to do. They didn't have those relationships. Ah, for, on the pop side, you know what I'm those... they had to they had to send me to the the, the crossover department, or the, you know what I'm saying. The, uh, it was weird, but they uh. knew they needed to get that record played because it was it was doing what it was gonna do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Without them, so they had to. <laughs> <laughs> you tell them. <laughs> so I mean. It, it it yeah I mean it it was I mean it it, it was a big also international too it's a massive international hit and stuff but yeah. then did you think oh man well, I need to follow that up with other singles like this or did you did you say, I did it I, I I thought I said well then I'm gonna do I'm still gonna just do records <clears throat> excuse me I wanted to have some cohesiveness of course on the project but each project I approach like a new project. You know, I was in, a, in whatever space I was in. Mm. With with that's why I was so excited to work with Teddy because a I was a fan. Um, but that by that point, you know, I didn't. I really had very little support at the label. It was basically at that point a tax write off. Excuse me for them. Hold on. 
Yeah. Oh, hold on a second. I gotta take a break. Yeah. Okay. I might sound a little stuffy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I just I just want to make music and um make good music, you know. So I started off by saying that I'm I'm a, a you know massive. I got into music back in the '80s when Teddy and stuff. So when I heard that he was co, he was producing the album that you executive produced, Home, um, I was like really excited and got out and got it. I love Nana with Chico, uh, the Varge, <laughs> big fan of Chico. So I love, I, I love, I love, I love the track, and I can tell. So I loved, I you know I got the album. It's of two thousand now. For most of us who were music fans, we 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 notice the shift within the industry. We notice how you know you talk about going to three labels. We noticed that you know one, one label's gobbling up all the others, and people are losing jobs. Yeah. yeah, we also uh -huh. noticed that um, it you know you started off having an R and B artist and a, and a hip hop artist being a guest, and then by the time we get to two thousand, it's like. The R and B artists are now singing the hooks for the the, the rappers, and, and you know, by right, two thousand ten, the R and B the hip rappers are singing this hooks and rapping at the same time. But exactly, <laughs> right, right. yeah. But That's like true. What did you think? Um, so, what was it? I mean, for most, because there's going to be loads of Teddy and New Jack fans who are going to be listening to find out what was it like recording um, um, with Teddy and doing the, the album with his team. I had such a blast. A, I was able to, I had two great friends of mine come down and help write. Uh, so I was at Future Studios in Virginia. Virginia. I was in a in a condo, a townhome, chilling for like two and a half months. Wow. I was chilling. I had a blast. It was <laughs> so fun um, being able to do that. I was working out, studio, that's it. Back, that was what I was doing. That's what I was doing. And I had a blast working with Teddy. Uh, super talented, super fun. Um, you know, business-wise, he sucks ass, but you know, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> he knows, he knows. That's my that's my that's my bro. Uh he's he's crazy. I'm like, you owe me a Mercedes, buddy. <laughs> I was time. He would get I like you're bananas. But um I had a great time. I again don't regret anything. I had I learned a lot uh working with him. Uh it was like another level. You know, him working with so many amazing people. Mm -hmm. Like like why wouldn't I, you know, I just I just I took it in. I took it in, I enjoyed it, and nobody could take nobody could take that. It's 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 in it's there forever. Yeah, I worked with Teddy. You know what I'm saying? He EP my album along with me. So why why did you decide um, after the success of um, Mahogany and you have touched it to not follow that formula of let me get some more of those sort of dance tracks and 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 sort of explore that area instead of going. I, I did. If you if Full Force was on home, yeah, I did Fever. It was like -ba 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 -ba. I loved I loved how we how we did that fever. I liked it a lot. So that was like kind of like that that vibe right there it was kind of like fever was kind of like just kind of in the vein of a touch it just a little more funky a little whatever. But um, I didn't. I felt like I did, and it was one more record. It was the two records I did with um with full force oh, full actually. Course. But, uh -huh. they, but they they didn't release them as the lead singles because they, they started off with I can tell. Yeah, we yeah we we can't because I because it was because it was kind of me going back to okay I'm a judge because I loved I can tell I thought it was, yeah, it was, it was a great yeah. record it was and it was me being going back to we starting at wh where I started like coming back it just okay here here's my R&B foundation this record is a good reintroduction because I did kind of go to the to the other side yeah would touch it and then they didn't do any more singles off of that because that that the same touch it carried that album so it was, I was like okay and they were already as far as business is concerned they were already like kind of just fulfilling the contract so to speak you know yeah did, did, did you think I mean as I said I, I loved the album I, I loved the work on it but did you think 
that home suffered from not having um, a, an executive within the label to, even though you-, you For put, sure. For sure. Somebody at the label that cared and so, that yeah, my, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was focused on me and wanted me to win. Absolutely. And I'm not saying that the people that were, but they weren't invested that way. Like Hev was, or nobody was ever invested. It was always me. Nobody else was invested that way. You know? I mean, what was the main difference between being at directly at Universal compared to when you were at um, Uptown? Because because when I spoke to Mike and Slim and, and, and they said when they were at Bad Boy, there was a lot of care in making sure the product was good. Financially, you weren't you didn't make the money, but you got the right product and you got the push. When they went straight to Def Jam, they got all the money, but it was pretty much do if it does, it, you know, that it was pretty much a vacuum, and they had to learn that wow, it's not as easy. Um, having that sort of you were out, it's harder to succeed when you're in a massive label without any sort of. Yeah, it's like it's like um, yeah, it, it it just doesn't work. It doesn't work, and that's exactly what happened to me. You just become one of the thousand. It's not a, there's no focus. There's no folk, no focus. Mm. No, nobody saying she needs this and we're going to do, no, no, we're going to do this. No, we're not doing that. We're doing this. That's in the rooms. Help it, hearing the, the, the stuff that they're saying. Because as an artist, I'm not in the room. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. With the label folk. Except for what I'm saying, this is what I want. Like, there's a few things I fought for, and yeah, it was just. Yeah, I wish he had released Nana. I loved, I loved the song, and and she Nana was, was Nana was on the soundtrack. You know that that was on the um, that was on the the uh, Kings of Comedy soundtrack. Oh, no, but I was talking about as a single, the video, because I, I I was a massive cheek. I thought, oh, this would be, this would have been, a, and, and I love the. Yeah, we that's why we put it on the soundtrack. You know, we, you know, it should have been a single. Yeah. Again, the, yeah, the I wasn't, stuff. and I wasn't on it either. I was focusing on, I can tell that was my directorial debut. Oh, yeah, you did the video. video. Okay. Uh, it's in the Henry. It's in the Henry, and I, I wrote the treatment, and I directed it with Cinder Henry. When when we think about you starting off with the first album, like yeah, yeah, and now the third album, you're not just executive producing it; you're actually doing the videos. That shows that you were really trying to expand creativity in in in, in lots of areas and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I I I, I wanted to the, the 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 um my heart was there, and then uh I just you know I guess I got disheartened, and I was like hey, I would take a break. And I got dropped. They sent me all my stuff in a in a bag. I mean, in a bag, in a box. They sent it to my house. Like everything I had done, like talk shows, data, anything you know, like tapes and stuff. It, yeah, it was so unceremonious. Wow. And I was like, wow. Like no call to my lawyer. No call to me. It was just. It was just. It was very unceremonious. And again, I felt abandoned, didn't realize that. Um, I just moved through that, you know, uh, like a G, you know, like I know that doesn't define me. And I'm going to always be able to do, I'm, I'm me. I'm going to always be able to do what I want to do. And then, you know, it was like a blessing in disguise because I didn't, I didn't owe them anything. <laughs> I was like, thanks. <laughs> So I, you know, I, I, that was what I was really happy about. I, I felt like that was a blessing because so many people get caught up in having to be bought out of their contracts. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't, I didn't owe anything. I was free and clear. But then, what does an artist do? In you know, and we're getting to two thousand and two or so, where okay, you've been, you're, you're no longer with Universal, um, and R and B isn't as 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 mainstream as it was back in the 90s so labels are more like looking for hip-hop acts and stuff so what 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 were you looking to do then in order to uh finding a home to record or i um uh, well obviously uh not so much you know um uh, because i i felt like i needed to take a minute because i wasn't sure what i wanted to do again i was disheartened and then i was able to work i was still working from touch it 
Um, and I and I was able to do theater. So I got okay. into the urban theater circuit and uh was able to maintain that way. I just and then I did stuff. I did Ayala, I did Ayala Van Zandt. Um in the meantime, I did different projects, like did okay. different songs and different projects, but I wasn't I, I think I was um yeah, I think I was I didn't really care. I didn't really care to uh, go look for another label situation. I just, I didn't have it in me. I just did it and have it and have it in the last, <laughs> you know, I just have it. I just, I'm, I still work. I still sing. I still record. Uh, I have like probably three albums worth of music. I just haven't, I think I'm, um, I think I'm a little gun shy. I think I think I still have a little trauma around that, um, putting it out in the way that this industry has changed. So I'm I'm always I've always been ahead of my time. Clearly, touch it all kind of, you know musically, um, visually. Um, like if you look at certain things, like I did things and they you know then you have the the girls and then doing them like beats later, like years mm -hmm. later. I'm like oh my god, I you know and then sometimes you know some of the younger artists or the newer artists be like oh yeah da, da, da. I'm like okay you know I'm an Aquarius so that's kind of like the story <laughs> of my life um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm always like ahead, beats ahead of myself and others and I just I just I just lived on my terms and then life you know on life's terms things happen uh you know, I, I went through a, 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 a period in my life that I referred to as the dark ages, uh, where I was just kind of surviving and living and surviving at the same time, excuse me, <clears throat> and not making, escaping, not making the best choices, uh, you know, having to, which got me to right here where I am. So I am grateful that I'm still breathing. I'm grateful that I'm here and I'm sane and I'm and I'm present and uh and you know and filled with wisdom and lessons that I've learned and and have taken heed to and have a lot to offer otherwise, like um screenplays and like there's so many other things that I want to do. Mm. Uh my voice music and when I open my mouth God you know that will always be a ministry that will always you know be something that that's just what it is right if there's some other there's so many other things that I uh that I have to offer that I'm working working on working to you know share that's where I'm at <laughs> yeah, the um I, I remember listening to um, um, one moment. I think it came out in twenty. What, how how did twenty fifteen? So I, I'm listening to it. I love the video, you know, black and white. <laughs> the little little dog. Is this not the same dog in the video? No, 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 no. That's my, that was my friend. That was my friend. Had the hunter's dog. Okay, I was like, yeah. oh, the, the, the dog stood out, but I was like, wow, this is. And because I'm, I'm I'm here in the UK, and I say this is the kind of stuff that we're listening to now, on on our on our radio UK stations, uh -huh. and 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 it so it was it wasn't R&B, it was more of a sort of a I don't even know it's a top forty stuff that we normally would listen to here, and I'm thinking, oh, this is one moment. And so, how did it do? Uh, and, and 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 you know, how did you come around coming up with that track, and and what did you, what was the response? I met a really great uh, producer. I was doing Michelle Obama's initiative uh, around that time. And I, and I did a song called, I did a project, Michelle Obama's, um, I forgot the name of it, but it was the Healthy Eating for the Children initiative. Mm -hmm. And I did a, a, a song, recorded a song called Veggie Love with J. Rome, uh, who won the duets reality show here. Um, amazing singer. So I, I have a little brother now and I met the producer. So he, I, you know, I, 
he was like, oh, you know, I, you know, I'm a fan and like, you know, I would love to know like what you got. And he let me hear some stuff. And I heard one moment I just started crying. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, my God. I was like, I that's the record that I want to do. I did put it out independently. Okay. Uh, I didn't do all of the. I'm going to re-release it, quite honestly. Okay. I'm going to re-release it, probably shoot another video. Oh, and um, and do it on the back on the on the independent side way better because I I signed a deal with this independent company just for that one single. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. No, I I I did. I I mean, it, even if I you know still listened to it recently, it and it's did it doesn't it seems. I won't say timeless, but it seems like present. So it doesn't feel as if, oh, that's an old track. It feels as if, as I said, if I heard it today, I it wouldn't surprise me on, especially here in the UK and stuff. So I was presently surprised, but I was surprised that it, it didn't, as you said, maybe they just didn't push it to... to, to, to... No, we didn't have... Yeah, I, like, there's, there's still things that need to happen that I wasn't able to do uh, okay. to push the record, you know, to still... Yeah, so I'm going to... I'm I, I know I need to re-release it because it's a lot of people know the record though. Like they were like, I love one moment and you know, mm -hmm. I'm glad it's out there, you yeah, know? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh yeah. But we, so it's, you... a little, it's a lot different. I just it just feels like work. <laughs> no? now, it, it it yeah, it feels like work to put because it is a, it, the the business of music is really a business, especially now because of streaming and you barely get any of that. It, it's just a lot, so you have to make sure it's just tedious. I don't know if I have it in me, but <laughs> no, because you did say that you had three albums worth of music. But then, and I, and and when I've spoken to artists who are putting out new music, I I ask them what is what are the incentives because you make very little from streaming. Um. Your 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 audience and fan base don't go on Spotify as frequent. You know, we probably much see the video on YouTube, but we come to the concerts. Um, yeah. But it's in a way, it's good for us to know that oh, you're still around and you're still making stuff. But we we we, we don't we're not really buying us. I, I I got a CD from um um. From There's somebody. nobody purchasing anything. Yeah. So it's really to do you know licensing. Oh, and yes, stuff yes, like yes. that. You know, yeah, so. yeah. 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 I'm probably gonna. I own one moment, so you know what I do know is that I own the masters of everything that I have okay. that I've recorded so far. So that's that, which I need to just get on the ball and start licensing my stuff to different, you know, shows and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Commercials and stuff. So, w w would you ever revisit some of your f your classics like Touch It and um, You and uh, I redid Amish Touch It. Jack Knight and I redid Touch It for so I could get my so we could get our coins. Okay. For, um, for the the anniversary, because we're gonna re-release it there. <laughs> okay. So okay. So the twenty five years, you're gonna release it soon. Yeah, I'm gonna release it. Um, as but I'm gonna do some fun stuff within an NFT, because I've been, you know, I'm a crypto investor and okay. um, I know about the Web three space and I I that is that is the focus. Like okay, just figuring out the very creative ways of, and then and then helping like the people that are my age that are my peer audience um and then also gathering a, a newer younger audience mm. through that because um and and them understanding the web3 space and how important it is for the next level and of our survival in this metaverse that yeah. is about that is upon us yeah. so you know would, would you so ever like to, to okay, share sorry. knowledge i'm sorry i like to share that's something that's really big for me and we can't bury our heads in the sand we have to stay um in tune with what's going on techn technologically mm. you know with our especially with our finances and stuff because this it we're in the we're in that 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 space where that the of the paradigm shift for banking and how we do mm. business that way and we cannot have our heads buried in the sand they're about to shift this whole thing on us and you have to have an understanding of what, how to survive, you know, um, to to flow and grow your money and understand what's happening and stop relying on the banks because clearly, 
Okay. Anyway, I'm getting a little. <laughs> no, it seems like you're fascinated. Are you? Are you, do, are you do you talk? Do are you talking about it or? I do. I okay. do talk about it. I do. Uh, yeah, because I think uh, mo- most of us um, of 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 the born in the seventies and stuff are like, you know, we've got a bank for one k, and uh, we that we we baby. <laughs> no man, no man, no no sir, Bob. No, yeah. no. no. I mean, we'd, we're just getting used to uh, streaming. You know, you're telling us now cryptos and stuff. That all sounds like a little too much maybe for the young and stuff. But but it's good when the people, because I've even seen Eddie F talk a lot about um, um, all this crypto stuff. So when you do have people who are your age generation and stuff talking about it in a language that's as, uh, accessible, it becomes a little bit easier to digest. But the people that we're hearing talk about it, seem a little like far removed and so it's like you know i don't understand so i'm just not going to pay attention so i guess having an advocate or um having an ambassador like yourself um might make it easy for us who aren't uh, aware of it or, or or scared of of trusting something that is not you know the bank you can see you can go in take your money and put it back in um having you know having somebody who can explain it um yeah, I mean definitely. I uh I wanna um I'm gonna put it out through a, a great company and um that makes it easy for people to because with, with NFTs I I'm able to share uh like I can share with you, you share in the success of the project. Mm. So if I if I like I can share like two percent of my royalties with so it becomes you're in, you're we stay away from the word investing because of things you know but the bottom line is that if you're if you're investing in me as an artist you it should should be able to work for you as well okay, okay. so yeah and yeah. i think as i mentioned it, it would be just helping to explain in in very plain language that makes us understand like you talked about if you're doing an nft of um, touch it what does that really mean to us? So if I'm if I'm investing in 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 the longevity and ownership of of yes. the song, um, then that seems to make more sense than um yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then you I can add things to it. Like if you have the NFT and then there's you get, you know, I call it um fairy dust say I mm. call it fairy dust and you get a capsule so you already have the NFT when you get the capsule you add it to that and then you get a whole nother situation mm. which adds value it adds more interaction it it's it's a it's a hold so when you go to s- sell it right if you do or whatever you do you have you have something that no one else has mm. period and that's what creates the the value you know, you don't want somebody just to flip your NFT. Like if it's just music, then that's like I could go on Spotify for that. But if you're getting things like uh 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 you're able to come backstage with me, uh and get on a red carpet with me, uh those types of things, those types of uh uh incentives and things like that, that makes sense. And then Things that other people would never ever have. They have to buy it from you yeah. to get it. And you can sell it for whatever. And then, you know, as an artist, it lives on for my legacy, for my grandchildren, because every time it gets sold, I get 10% of the sale every single time. And it's in a blockchain. There's nothing you can do to shift that. And I guess people like Picasso would have loved to have something like this, you know, when they do a painting and it goes and that's it. People are making the monies thereafter and, and the artist has no no ownership, yep. no no percentage and stuff. Exactly. This okay. is different. And that's why it's such a big in in that um in that modality with the with with uh physical artists, uh it's it's amazing. Like it, it you can watch somebody paint like do the pictures like you're there yeah. you know what i mean like the nfts can are, are so it's mind-blowing what what we can do yeah. with them well i mean i just say it'd be good as i said for it it's it probably takes somebody like yourself sharing and explaining more so than the, those who are in the industry who are doing it 
they because they they don't look as they don't look as like us and and they don't use the language that we can understand so right they try to make it forcibly like they on purpose make it obtuse so, so we get turned off yeah when i say we i mean you know we yeah yeah <laughs> It's not that serious. It's not that deep. There's a way to really make it layman and yeah. not so scary, you know. And that's that's my point. Yeah, I mean, just quickly, would you still re-record you and and um, miss you? I, you? I, I was gonna. I'm absolutely going to do that. Okay. I started with touch it. I think I'm gonna do. I miss you and all of that. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Um. I normally, when I end my interviews, I always ask my guests that if you were, say, stuck in an elevator and you had to, it says that was going to take two hours, and you had, you had, you could put on your favorite film. What, what would your favorite film be, movies to watch? That's a great one because I'm, I'm such a movie buff. <laughs> oh my gosh! So hold on. Hmm. Hmm. Just one? Yeah, that's your favorite. We all have our own. Okay. It would have to be just because right now it would be mahogany. I mean, not mahogany. I'm sorry. Lady Sings the Blues. Okay. Okay. I know it's a little dark, but I I <laughs> have been connected to Billie Holiday for, since I was a little girl. Um, Interesting. Just, yeah. And, and I love what I think Diana Ross is an amazing actress mm. and I wish she did more of it, but whatever. She did an amazing job yeah. in her patrol. Yeah. I think very, I think they did an amazing job. Okay. Lady singer. And then what's your all time favorite song? <laughs> all time favorite song. <laughs> <laughs> My all time favorite song. Okay. So this, I know you're like, what? what like that evokes like one of the songs that evokes so much emotion and it just oh my gosh I just don't even know um aside from so many others but this is in my top five send for me by Atlantic Star that song just does something it first of all Atlantic Star is the truth yeah. and um they just had so many bomb records but send for me wow. by Atlantic Star <laughs> You got you to gotta play it. You got to play it for the people when you yeah. do this. I'm yeah. telling you. Okay. Do you know that record? No, I don't. No. Are you serious? I, I'm sure I might have heard it, but it, it's not, you know, it's not like uh, this. Wait, <laughs> I know it's not like, but no, for, for us, you know it. I'm telling you, I'm going to sing a little bit. Okay. Um, I don't know what was said, my baby. I thought that everything was fine. You say, um, you say you got to get away to find yourself. Send for me. I'm just a telephone call away. You know this song when you hear it. I will. You gotta know Atlantic Star. Maybe I, not, but it's yeah, one of you got, I, yeah. you're gonna know it now. I, I will. I will. Of Atlantic Star, and then listen to send for me. <laughs> I definitely will. That's like true R and B. Like that is. Mm. Yeah, I love I love the Atlantic Star, uh, you know, and the, 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 we don't get those type of bands, male, female, and and you know, just singing, just six secret lovers, and um, um, yeah, uh, and stuff. Oh, it's like early. It's earlier. It's early. Uh, oh. It's early Atlantic Star. It's like before Brenda. Um, before Brenda. Okay. Came. I, I mean Barbara. Before Barbara, the real, real cute one. Yeah. Before, before Secret Lover. Barbara, yeah, okay. before that one. Oh. So it was when the other young lady was there, but they were they they are amazing. Period. So <laughs> okay. you know, when you were singing, I just remembered that you took part in Tank's R and B Can We Talk Challenge. What did you remember about doing <laughs> singing that? I, you know, that was my first challenge. I just did it because, first of all, Tevin, I love Tevin, and Tevin on my page. If you look on the comments, he said I did a great job. He gave me his <laughs> he gave me his blessings. <laughs> And I was like, oh my God, I love you. <laughs> you know, so, you know, I, I'm stamped. I'm stamped official. Yeah. I did it. I killed it. And that's that. Yeah. <laughs> But it it, it 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 took everyone by surprise. I think it just it's like it gave us a yearning for wow, why 
we loved we loved what was going on. It's a pity they didn't continue to other songs and stuff. But I want to start one. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna start doing a weekly um, song that I just I just sing and just just for interaction on my on my pages because I should. Yeah, you know. And it's stuff that we, especially as we get into the holiday season, and and the same, uh, there's a generation of us who aren't connecting as much to what's being put out there, and and so we do yearn for some of our soulful legends to be able to at least give us some 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 stuff. Um, yeah, I just remembered. So I am here in the UK, and and when I was telling the community that oh I, I can't wait, I'm going to interview Monifa. These people saying, "Oh, ask her about what her experience was on a show called is it, um, R&B, R&B Divas." Because <laughs> we didn't, we don't, they, didn't, they didn't show it here. So, what, what, what was that? Um, I had R&B. to look. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. How? What was that like? Because I, I, I didn't see it here, so I didn't know what, what, the, what, what. <laughs> so just promise that you'll go on YouTube and catch. You I, know, you yeah. So R&B Divas was the brainchild of Nikki Gilbert from Brownstone. Uh, they were signed to Michael Jackson's label. Uh, you remember Brownstone? A good friend of mine. And Selena Johnson, Faith, Kiki Wyatt, and myself, the starting five, did the R&B Divas reality show. And it just shared us, shared our lives, the things that we've gone through, uh, where I shared a lot of things, um, you know, about, where I was for so long. Oh my gosh, brave. Where I was, bumped his head. Where I was for you know in in those darker periods. You know, transparent to share. Uh, you know my my addiction uh, story. You know, journey with addiction and recovery, and just us coming together, sharing what we went through and what we have experienced as women in this business. Incidentally, I was. I performed, it was at Kelly's, uh, Kelly Price's party. We all were, uh, when everybody saw Whitney sing and heard her sing for the last time. Oh, yeah, I'm okay, yeah. We were, we had already shot the, uh, the sizzle reel and it was already in different people's, uh, inbox, so to speak. And incidentally, after, after she passed, Two days later, I was still in LA. Two days later, we got the call that TV One picked it up. This is a black network here, um, owned by Kathy Hughes, big media uh, person, uh, media uh, mogul. Uh, Kathy Hughes, uh, TV One network picked it up, and we went and shared. I started to share our stories, and uh, it was very interesting. We ended, it ended up being franchised to LA with Shantae Moore, Chrisette Michelle, Lil Mo, the girl from, um, oh gosh. Is that Mila? Oh, huh? 702 Mila? No, Mila was all with us at, in, in the second season. Oh. So Mila, uh, oh jeez, uh, Destiny Child, uh, oh my gosh. Not Michelle, was it Kelly? No, like no, no, no. Uh, no, no, no. She was the first. She was the original. Uh, oh my gosh, why can't oh, I remember this? Latavia. Latavia. Latavia and Mila came on. So did uh Latasha Scott from from uh oh, Escape. Escape on the second season. And and Angie Stone. Okay. So first it was the start of five: Faith, Nikki, Selena Johnson, Kiki Wyatt, myself. Season two: Angie. Uh, Mila, Latavia, Latasha came on. Faith and Nikki were kind of gone, and then it was just an amazing show. It was real. We didn't need any drama. We had everything right there, and it was very, very real. And I got married. I I got married to my wife on um uh, on you know they we got married, and it was the first first black female couple to have their wedding televised wow. and then that was the last season because tv one didn't want to pay us okay because because for those who it's funny i interviewed mila and i didn't realize that she was on that i should have asked her about that and i interviewed nikki and, and brownstone but okay the other people the other question they asked was 
Uh, and I don't know if it's TV about, you. is it your daughter? Or did, was I did it... Ayala Vanzant. Yeah, my daughter. Yes, my daughter, Kemi, who is 31. I have five grandchildren. Okay. Who? <laughs> um, I'm a proud Nana. Whoa. And, um, uh, yeah, seven to one. One to seven. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Stan Steps. And uh, I did, we, you know, she's a Christian woman have very adamant beliefs uh didn't agree with my my chosen my partner they it wasn't like they didn't get along or we didn't get along, but she she didn't come to my wedding we shared we share what that looked like yeah. on the show on tv because people go through that every single day so you know, we decided to share that journey so that was real that wasn't acting it was more like I this is know. okay no, uh, that was real and then we did a Yamla because there was a lot of, um, you know, I was emo like I wasn't available. I was on the road. I was wasn't available to her. So when I when they called me to do it, I was like, well, let me. This would be great for my my mom and I and my daughter to do something. And it was gonna be the three of us, but then they opted just to focus on my daughter and I. Okay. So, so but, yeah, it was amazing. You well, know, we decided to heal up some things. Because okay. I had already done some of my work, you know, I would already, I was already real, like I had really dug in at that point. And I knew that my daughter probably had a lot of things that she needed to. So I asked her, she said she wanted to do it and we did it. We shared. Wow. And so how was that like being something that is so, um, so private to, to be shown publicly because this is where everyone else is saying, um, "Oh, ask Minifa is she, she and her daughter cool?" And because they're yeah. seeing stuff like that live, and I'm and and yeah. and it and it's and it's not if it's supposed to be real, then it's like, wow. Did yeah. You... Well, we 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 disagreed and and we we moved through it with love. It wasn't you know, she didn't you know she wasn't coming to the wedding. She didn't agree, but this is my life and. That's that's just what it is. We purposely showed that because we were showing the the normalizing same gender love, right? It's not different, and and it wasn't it wasn't um it wasn't that was one of the things that I told the producers it, the as soon as I met them, I was like, this is my life. This is my real life. This I did. This is not a salacious. This is not for a storyline. This is the person that I love, and don't don't try to bullshit. Like don't do. Excuse me. Don't try it. Like we. This is not a game, right? I'll punch. I'll punch. I'll punch everybody <laughs> in their face. Don't play with me. That's basically what you know what it was like. Uh, and I made that very clear because this I was sharing my life, and I've always been the type of person that live for myself, comfortable in my skin. And this is me, take it or leave it. And I wanted, I wanted to be the one to tell my story. I don't like any, I, no, one, no one is ever gonna tell my story before I tell it or like I'm going to tell it, yeah. my truth, you know? It, it, being such a... Um... Especially within the black community, and 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 you mentioned about your daughter being Christian. Did did were you ever worried about the the response of of how the community might might take it and see it, or did you um or or any backlash, or how was it? I knew that there was a possibility just because of how you know with Christianity and how people use the Bible and religion and all mm -hmm. of that stuff to whatever. Incidentally, we didn't get a lot of that. Like we got so much support mm -hmm. and quite honestly, so in our inboxes, my, my wife and I, so many people were just like, Oh my God, like you, you guys remind me of me and my husband. It's no different. Like I see me and my, you know, it's people focus on sex when they think about, People, uh, same gender loving, they immediately go to what goes on in the bedroom, which is freaking weird because that's not what I do when I see couples. That's not the first thing I think about is them, what they do in the bedroom. And because I'm a, a queer woman, 
doesn't mean that I I I might not even be having sex. I might be um abstinent. I might not even be having sex. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. so that like it's it's really interesting, but just the the outpouring of you know, wow, you guys, you know, my daughter, da, da, da. And I really, you know, I, I, I felt a way and I didn't know how to, I, I wasn't supportive, but now I see, see you guys. And, and now like, I, I get it. And I, and I, and I look at it differently and I'm able to support. There was a lot of that. Mm. There was this 80 year old woman. We were in BBQ, BB, BB Kings in New York. And this woman, she was like 80 years old. And when I'm telling you, Oh my gosh, we were in tears. She was like, I know you guys. She was like, you y'all just keep on loving each other. Y'all don't worry about what it was. I couldn't, I was just like, y'all, you know, you your relationship is beautiful. Y'all, y'all keep on loving each other the way you do. I I'm standing there just tears just pouring down my face. Wow. Because I was just like, love is, you know, she sees the love, she sees the friendship, she sees what we have, mm -hmm. not the fact you're not thinking about what we do, you know, it, it, it just, that's just what it was like. And that's why I wanted to make sure that like, I would never shoot scenes in, in, in my bedroom. I would never shoot scenes in, you know, of course we, we hugged, we, you know, cuddled and things that normal, you know, things that people, couples do, but like all of that, like shooting in bed and all that, because of that, Mm. We purposely didn't do any of that. Okay. You know? Yeah. So I wanted to share my story. I, you know, I, I'm always, hey, this is, this is, this is me. So. Yeah. But, it, it, but I think the final question has always been because the, the last people saw was just you and uh, uh, your daughter not coming to the wedding on TV, but you've, you've got your grandchildren. Uh, is the relationship better, good now? Oh, great. we we're, we're it wasn't bad then, and it, and it's even better now that we've healed some things. Okay. Uh, that we, you know, she's she's been able to work through her own stuff based on the things, the the way she experienced me as a parent oh. and what she went through. You understand? So yeah. she had to have that, and now you know because I'm present now and I'm available emotionally, and I've I've I've, I've been accountable. You know, the rest is up to her. I'm here whenever she needs me for whatever she needs me for emotionally to, to work so through some things. I'm available. I'm accountable. I'm open. Yeah. And um, it's it's amazing. My babies, you know, I get to, I, I have such joy in that, in that, in that area. I get to experience and do, do it a little differently. I get to do it five different ways now, <laughs> a little better and different because it's, five individual souls that are unique and fun and funny and I get to spend time with them and I, I'm getting to know my daughter so much more as a woman and I'm so proud of her as a mother you know uh and even in even though uh, it wasn't that it was adverse her a lot of her uh experience of me as a mom even in that I know that it's it's helped to be a better parent, mm. the best parent she can be. Yeah. So I, when I see her, I'm just like that's I I, I it, it also helps me with my the forgiveness of myself, you know, and and having gratitude and seeing and being so proud, you know, of her as a parent. I was doing my maths and and I and I and, and I reckon that you had her before you signed to Uptown. Yes. I uh, had her at 19. I signed to Uptown. I was 24. Okay. Yeah. So as, who was looking after her when you were? My mom. Uh... I, had, I was blessed with a mom that had my back. Okay. You know, she had my back and we made it work. And her dad. Like her dad was in her life. It was a village. So okay. we, we did that. <laughs> Yeah. Did 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 yeah. you get the support they you know when we talked about your abandonment and and then how heavy and and him leaving in the second album and and not really connecting it to later on have you had the opportunity to 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 go through um therapy and stuff to be able to talk Absolutely. Through? I sure did. Uh 
Uh, I, I actually did EMD, EMDR. Okay. I did a modality EMDR. I'm, I'm sure you're probably familiar with it. Yeah. Uh, that was like amazing. And I, I sought that out when I, when I saw it, like I was like looking cause I knew things were a little weird, but I knew I needed, I knew what my stuff was, but knowing and working through it and healing it. Yeah. So I knew I had trauma, you know, yeah. I had trauma. I'm, I'm a sexual, a, a sexual assault survivor. Wow. Uh, and so I had a lot of things that I needed to process. So I wanted to make sure because because I knew I had to process, I was looking for modalities. And I when I stumbled upon that and did my research with EMDR, I knew immediately that that was something that I wanted my my uh, therapist to to uh, to be uh, versed in and yeah. use the modalities. So I looked for a therapist that was. Uh, uh, that did EMDR, it worked wonders for me. So uh, yeah. And what's encu- encouraging for you saying this? Because one of the, one of um, part of what I always try and do is to get my guests to talk about their experience going for therapy to normalize it. Because within our black community, uh, therapy is seen as no, no. We go to church, we we'll pray about it, talk to our our hairdresser. Uh, you know, we don't talk to strangers and. And 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 being able to have you share your own experience, it's helping me to get the message out to normalize the fact that yeah. as a race we're struggling because we don't we're not going through to getting the proper help that we need, especially when we Correct. go through traumas and things. Correct. I am. I'm a. I'm a mental health advocate. I'm a huge advocate for uh, therapy. Uh, always have been, and <laughs> uh, I I know where we know where it comes from. We know the why of the reason we're guarded that way because it, it it being vulnerable in that way and having people know things were wrong could were, was deadly for us at a point in our in our history. Mm-hmm. Being here in America, being there in Europe, it would it people knowing your vulnerabilities and it it was deadly for us. Bottom line, but we don't have we're not. We're not faced with those imminent dangers, right? Yeah. As we were before. And we have to recognize that as a people, we have generational trauma yeah. that is that is flowing, coursing through that cellular, uh, okay? <laughs> and then we have the situational, right? Things that you know, environmental. How you know we're all we're we're vulnerable when we're kids. We we don't have control over our environment, who we're raised by, who our parents are, where we live, what we are at the mercy. And so, absolutely, everything stems from those years mm-hmm. and how you were or weren't uh, cared for or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's not it's not a blame game. It's just knowing that a lot of the mechanisms that we we have that we use to survive we outgrow them because Mm. they don't serve us you know we you know things change you don't you don't need certain things to protect yourself when you were at at 30 that you you can't use the same mechanisms that you use at 12 they just it doesn't work it's like having your first grade outfit on yeah at 30 can you imagine having like your first grade picture day outfit on (laughs) how crazy that would look yeah. That you know, our mechanisms don't serve us, and they be they become a hindrance, uh, and a liability, emotional liability, like I like to call it. Uh, so we have to learn how to understand that we're accountable at a certain point. Nobody else is. We are it. We are responsible for ourselves. It's not mommy and daddy's fault. At you know, at twenty years old. I'll give you 22, but at a certain point, yeah, you, you have to take the reins on that and, ma- and manage, right? And yeah. and and clear and forgive and heal and um all of those things to make sure you're okay. So you can break the cycles. I I broke the cycle of addiction in my family. I was like, wow. my grandkids aren't coming into a world mm. where I'm addicted and I'm carrying on that cycle. It's not happening. And it didn't. And I'm so thankful. Yeah. 
Yeah, and then that's important for us. There's a lot of generational curse uh, around um, addiction, even things like diabetes and things. It's generational. If, if we don't break it, our kids will pick up and still carry those things as well. That's true, because uh, it's not all just predisposed. All of it is not predisposed. It's bad choices, yeah. bad decision making, uh, all of those things. I don't want to say bad, but just not the healthiest. Not the healthiest, uh, yeah. You know, we know better we have to do better we are charged with doing better period that's it yeah and we have too much knowledge at our fingertips on a daily basis just saturated with it to not do better yeah with the information we have well i've really kept you for a, a while i appreciate yeah, you have. it i'm starving i gotta blow my nose <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, so i'm sorry guys <laughs> you know uh Oh my gosh! I just got a bad head cold out of nowhere. Oh, and I'm, I would appreciate the fact that you still you're still able to be in a trooper, you know, for almost two hours and uh, <laughs> and have this conversation. What 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 can we expect from you? You mentioned the NFT and and 25th anniversary of Touch It. Anything? Are you any tours? Any plays? Or anything else that we we should look out for? Well, I'm working on a screenplay for from a book that I have. It's been about, about 25 years, quite honestly, since I read this book and it has not been, and I'm just starting to write the screenplay for it wow. because I am going to, this movie is going to be done. It's called Cane River. Gonna do it. And I'm still remembering you saying, and we talked about your first album, you didn't think about writing. Now you're making, thinking about writing screenplays. You're really taking things to another level. It's amazing how, um, how powerful it is to just to visualize and 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 being in a moment where nothing seems impossible and nothing is impossible because once you you know if you 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 if you so i heard something today i can't remember it but it was so profound if you 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 dream If you, I mean, you're, you're going to go as far as your mind is going to allow you to go. Mm. Yeah. So you got to quiet the noise, the, oh my God, that's impossible. Oh, that's not going to happen. You know, you got to quiet that noise. Yeah. You're still doing a lot of, um, on a spiritual level, doing a lot of self worship, mm. right? Divine self, because God, I, God reside. I am, God is here. He's a part of me. I am a part. I am. They, it is right. Mm. So just really getting into self divine self and self worshiping to tap into that. Yeah. And remember, so it's helping a lot. Yeah. Once well, you heal, it doesn't mean stuff goes away. Like you still have these little, you know, you have to be, it's maintenance. You have to stay, you got to stay in, you know what I mean? It's, it's a daily, daily process. Yeah, and 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 also as as um, um and uh, uh, you know I'm not excluding anyone, but as I said, with us in the black community, it's um, it almost feels as you know I woke up this morning, especially after hearing the death of um um take off and yeah. and the fact that it was a shooting, you know, after, and 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 I thought oh. within why as do are we a cursed race? Um, because we seem to. You know, and it's not just in America. You know, I, I I was born here in England. I went to high school in Nigeria, went to college in the States and oh. everywhere I've lived across these three continents. Um, even within Na Nigeria and Africa, the largest black population in the world, there's still that sense of I'm pulling you down. Oh, you're not from my tribe. You're not from my complexion. Even if you're in the same tribe or oh, you're from a different family, even if you're the same family, you're different grandparents. And it's still there's it's it's very rare to find the same type of unity that I see within other races. So so um I've noticed those from the um um like India or Pakistan or even the Jewish community. They they in general there's a sense of if I help you, we help ourselves. Um right. and and sadly within our black community, it's it's people do it. I'm not talking about the, the, the people that right. reach it, out. It is, but it's on the larger scale. But on like the larger the, scale. It, yes. And, yeah. And, and 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 it sort of it just so sort of saddens me that you know we 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 um 
we 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 haven't got a collective sense of 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 building and supporting ourselves and then and 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 we 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 get a little bit and we're going to keep it to ourselves and go away and stuff so um yeah so it, it i don't know where where i got away from but i just it is that that okay. my hope is that there is most more of you guys there in the public eye and um, the more we start seeing you guys team up and do things um, to elevate the, the race and uh, whether it's women and um, or stuff, it then sends a sense of, you know, maybe we can do this. And, and that's why I'm doing this. You know, I, I t tomorrow morning I'm going to have therapy with, uh, you know, to educate parents about how their kids are going to be looked after, talk to um, some grade school kids and then do some sessions. But I'm always mindful that, awesome. the, that you know, my bit to help my community is to have interviews with celebrities like yourselves and have some part of it to talk about wellness, mental health, and a sense of um, uplifting and things. So I really appreciate your time today, Monique. Thank you've really, you. You've really blessed us and 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 blessed me with your with your, with your time. Um, and um, it was great speaking with you. Thank you. I had a great time. Uh, Time well spent. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, hopefully, we can see an uptown reunion. You know yourself, Christopher Williams, uh, and and it's stuff. It, Chris and I are very close. We're like brother and sister, and that's my big bro. Chris and I are gonna. We're working on some stuff. I don't know if you remember um, American Idol back in the early days with Randy um, Simon and Paul Abdul. I used to always say that. If I ever, if I can't sing for to, to, for my supper, but if I was ever had to go in and sing a song, I was going to say I'd wanted the voice of Christopher Williams and my songs were All I See. And if, <laughs> that was going to be my, you know, that was going to be my song to win I the competition. <laughs> to win you the should game. interview him. He's in a great space. I'm going to um have JT hook you up with his, if you want to, like, if you have it. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I was supposed to interview him. November of 2019 and then within a month he became ill so I haven't had a chance yeah. so I mean he, he's has... doing amazingly and he's in a great space and it, he would probably love to talk to you and you should because he's like a wealth of a lot of things He's just you, such an amazing spirit. If you give him a reference, if you give him, if you I will. my, yes, yeah, because you can see my space is, it's not a tabloid space. It's, it's I know, it's, I know. Yes. I will tell him, like, absolutely. I'm going to just, can I just pass along your it, info? Yes, please do. Because I saw he liked the, you posted the, the, the little fly and I saw that he liked it. And I thought, oh, hopefully he would. Yeah. So yeah, I, yeah, I appreciate yeah, I'm going to, yeah, I'll have JT um send everything to you. I'll, I'll, he'll do a, a, I'm so sorry. Oh, bless you. <laughs> I have JT to a, a email. Okay. 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 I appreciate that. Well, no, you've sure. been you've been an angel, and 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 I and thank you for for your time and for blessing us with everything and stuff. Thank I, you. I, I thank appreciate. You. It's Namdi, right? Namdi, that's correct. Yes. I love it. Namdi Okoye, right? <laughs> yes. Namdi uh, Okoye. Yeah. Well, right. Okay. Good. <laughs> you did. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Oh, thanks very much, and have a good evening. Hey, my love. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, to press the notification bell so that you can be notified when we do have a new interview. Loads to come, but thanks a lot for watching.